Some of you may remember the story of me getting arrested by Miami police for photographing them against their wishes, which is what led to the creation of Photography is Not a Crime in 2007. The story had been picked up by blogs all over the country and ended up on Boing Boing, where it went hugely viral, allowing me to see the power of social media. I was standing on a sidewalk photographing a group of police officers making an arrest when they turned to me and told me to leave, telling me it was a private matter. I reminded them they were standing on a public road and that I had every right to photograph them. They tackled me and bashed my head into the pavement and twisted my arm behind my back while yelling stop resisting when I would not stop complaining about the unlawful arrest. They threw me in jail on a stack of false charges, the first of four unlawful arrests for taking photos in public. I ended up beating every single one of those cases, including a conviction that had reversed upon appeal when a judge, a former police union attorney, allowed improper evidence against me in trial. Inspired by the power of social media, I launched Photography is Not a Crime on a WordPress blog two months later to proclaim my innocence and to document my upcoming trial. However, I quickly discovered that police in this country were arresting people on a regular basis for taking photos in public under the guise of homeland security, even though the courts had long ruled that photography is not a crime, including of police officers, and it is in fact protected by the United States Constitution. You may remember that Pinnock would write these stories while the mainstream media would ignore these stories until they became impossible to ignore. Truth is, had it not been for Pinnock establishing that we have the right to record police in public during those early years, we may have never seen the George Floyd video, which opened the eyes of many Americans to the horrors of police abuse. However, if it wasn't for you, the readers, whose eyes had already been opened and who supported Pinnock financially and morally during those early years at a time when prosecutors and judges and cops were trying their best to shut us down, we may have never lasted this long. Now, after almost 14 years of operating on a shoestring budget, we are expanding Pinnock by turning it into a nonprofit news site, which allows us for the very first time to accept tax-deductible donations. One of our goals is to create a database of bad cops, but we are going to need your help in doing that. These bad cops are known as Brady List Cops. The term comes from a 1963 Supreme Court decision that states prosecutors must disclose the names of cops with integrity issues, which they rarely do. The American Civil Liberties Union describes these Brady List Cops as having Quote, histories of falsifying reports, fabricating or tampering with evidence, lying on the witness stand, coercing witnesses, brutalizing people, accruing misconduct lawsuits or complaints, blatant racism, and more, end quote. In other words, these are the cops we write about. Our plan is to create a series of educational videos that will teach our readers how to obtain these lists from their local prosecutor's office. We will then upload the names of the cops to the database. By making their names public, we can help protect innocent people from dirty cops. As a nonprofit news site, we are now able to apply for grants and donations through foundations, but it can take months before we are approved for any funding. However, if everybody watching this video today pitches in, say, $20, we can get off to a running start. With your help, we can shine an even brighter light into the darkest corners of government. With your help, we can continue exposing the bad cops that have long been protected by the system. This is, after all, an issue that affects every single one of us.